All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Just My Thought. So we have come to the conclusion of our five part series for 10 things to make a relationship work. Today is part five. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right. Number <laughs> to say number six, number nine, tip number nine, speak up or shut up. There are no mind readers. If you want something, say it. If you don't clearly communicate what you are looking for, you don't have the right to get upset with the other person for not providing it. Hints are all right sometimes, but if whispering isn't working, yell. This one is, is important. Oh, all of them are important, but think about how many times you've wanted something but you didn't communicate that you wanted something and then you got upset when you didn't get it there's a, a joke out there of the boyfriend or husband asking the wife or girlfriend hey i'm going to the store you want anything and the wife or girlfriend says no i'm good i'm not hungry the boyfriend husband comes back with nothing for them and the girlfriend wife is upset why didn't you get me anything? You said you didn't want anything. Guys, we're logical creatures. So we don't have time to try to decipher and decode all of the hints and, and everything like that. A lot of people like to try to test their partner. This annoys the piss out of me. Stop doing that. Relationships are already hard enough. Stop testing them with these stupid little childish games to see how they're going to respond to see how they're going to act to see if they're going to choose the option that you think that they should choose speak up or shut up if you want something say something if you don't say that you can't get upset at the person for not reading your cues and and guessing your mind games and all this other excess stuff that's childish leave it alone conversely if you've stated time and time again what you expect and still haven't gotten it, this is the key part. Don't go horse trying to turn a mule into a stallion. I pat myself on the back for that. Don't go horse. Don't lose your voice trying to turn a mule, somebody that's stubborn and doesn't want to, to even try into a stallion, something that you are proud of and want to be with. State your case. Make sure you're, you're, you're open and honest about the things that you want and the things that you don't want, the things that you like, the things that you don't like. That should be information that's easily accessible. Your partner should not have to guess on that. They should be, they should give, be given access to that information. These are the things that I like. Oh, I like X, Y, Z. Talked about love languages in a previous video. I think Sheena was in that one. But talking about the love languages. This is my love language. This is what makes me happy. This is what make me, makes me feel loved. This is what fills my tank, so on and so forth. So be open and honest about that. But if you've stated time and time again, but you're not getting any of those things, don't continue to waste your voice and your time trying to turn this person who's clearly not fitting what you're looking for time to cut your losses let the mule go and go somewhere else to find your stallion that's a, a hard thing to do in many cases especially when you've invested so much time and energy into a person that's why the communication aspect is so important not just in the beginning of the relationship but all throughout because if you're clear with your intentions if you're in clear you're clear with your likes and dislikes and wants and hopes and everything like that, in the beginning, it should save you a lot of problems throughout the, the relationship. But you have to understand that there are circumstances and situations where you are going to change your, you know, tastes and preferences change over time. All of the, all of ours do. Think about something that you liked or didn't like when you were a kid. And think about, you know, how you feel about that particular, particular thing now as an adult. So it changes. And once you get into a, a relationship with someone, you know, your thoughts and feelings are going to change. You cannot stay the same person that you were 
single in a relationship. You cannot stay the same person you were in your past relationship in your new relationship. If you haven't changed and learned something along the way in between those stages, then your present relationship is probably going to fail. There has to be an evolution. There has to be a growth. And growth is change. All right. So that's number nine. Number 10. Expectations versus obligations. And I've said this many times. Any of you that, that know me, family and friends, you've heard me say this at, at, at some point. Expectations versus obligations. You should know what you want in a relationship before you get involved in one. That said, no one is perfect and no one ever will be. All you have the power to do is A, present your expectations or desires. B, decide what you are and are not willing to compromise on. C, hear the rebuttal. And D, act. Let me state all those again. All you have the power to do is A, present your expectations or desires. B, decide what you are and are not willing to compromise on. C, hear the rebuttal. And D, act. Disappointment comes when someone fails to meet expectations. It's all right to have high expectations, but before flying off the handle when they aren't met, you should revert back to speaking clearly and knowing your role. Okay? You are not the parent. Your expectations does not make it an obligation. Message! Your expectations does not make it an obligation. So I know I said in number nine that you should speak up or shut up. Say what you want. Say what your expectations are. These are the things that I'm looking for in a relationship, in a partner. These are the, the gender roles if you want to go by those and so on and so forth. Speak up. That's important. However, just because you expect a certain behavior from your partner, they are not obligated to abide by that expectation. Because they are an adult and they must be able to do what they feel they're comfortable doing and what they accept. That's why the conversation has to be had. And then you meet in the middle, find a compromise. That's why I said, understand what you're willing to compromise on. This is important, but I'm willing to compromise on that. How much am I willing to give? How much wiggle room am I willing to give to my partner? The rebuttal, the person has to have the floor and the freedom to say, okay, yes, I think I can do that. Or no, that's not for me. When you have this honest conversation, this open conversation, and you're, you're both honest with, with what you want, what you don't want, what you expect, what you don't expect, what you're comfortable with, what you're uncomfortable with. When you have that conversation, then you can decide whether or not we can move in this tango and this dance and make it work. But if you're telling me I want all these different things and I'm like, hmm, I don't think I can give you any of that. Then we know that it's not going to work out. You're expecting all of this. And you think that I'm obligated to give it, but I'm not. Because I have to also do what I'm comfortable do, doing and what's in my nature to do. So, again, expectations versus obligations. The only people that you can demand and force, I guess not in this new age parenting, is your children. I expect you to have your homework done when I get home. I expect you to clean your room. I expect you to behave in, in school. You have more control over that situation because your responsibility is to guide them. Those are your children, but your partner is not your child. So you can have some expectations, some wishes, some hopes and everything like that. But you're on that equal footing. You can't force them to comply. You can't force them to do those things that you want. You can hope and pray. I found the right one. This one's going to be good for me. Okay. So that's just my thoughts. Those are the 10 things 
to make a relationship work. If you have not seen parts one through four, please, please, please go back. What in the world is in my eye? Go back and look at those parts and get the full list of the 10 things. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through this five part series. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something from this. Share the video. Share it with your friends, family. If you're in a relationship, watch it with your partner. Discuss it. Let me know how the conversation goes. And uh, yeah, <laughs> give me your feedback. All right. That's all I got for this video. Um, I am starting a new series. If you haven't seen the promotion for it, it's called The Quarantine Chronicles. I am, inter I am interviewing people from all around the world about their life during lockdown. So uh, this has been a tough time for all of us this past year and a half that none of us expected to be continuing on in this pandemic. Uh, so I want us to share our stories and give some hope and encouragement to others around us who may be suffering a little uh, more than others. So stay tuned for the Quarantine Chronicles. If you would like to share your story, I will leave the link to the sign up in the description and I'll be back. Thank you guys. Remember to like, share and subscribe. All that other good, all that other good stuff. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys later. Remember, whatever you do, do it justice. <laughs>